In today's video, I'm bringing you along as I do a couple projects on my F30 335, which include an F80 M3 brake conversion and a Dorch Stage 2 fuel pump. Hey, this is Zach. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. So, why am I doing the intro? Well, upon editing, I realized that Brian still hasn't learned where the record button is. So there was no intro and I wanted to clarify what this video is going to be about how it's filmed. So basically this is going to be a high level overview of how to install the Dorch high pressure fuel pump as well as an F80 brake kit onto his F30 and 55 335. And that being said, there is a DIY for the F80 brake kit and how to install it that just launched before this. But for this video, we just wanted to kind of review it and talk about the brakes and also just show you kind of a vlog style video of Brian installing these on his car. So um, without further ado, back to the video. I just want to give you a little update kind of on where I'm at with everything. So I got all the wiring for the most part out of the way. And then I just, it's a little dark down there. Um, I just unhooked the DME, make sure that all the connections are again, just out of this general way. Now, typically when you do this, you disassemble that whole plastic portion with the aluminum brace under it. But I've done this actually a few times now where you don't actually have to do that. So if I don't have to remove it, they don't have to reinstall it. So I'm gonna actually skip that. And then at this point, I just have, was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight-ish, maybe 10 of the nuts and bolts to secure the intake manifold on, and then that's ready to come off. And then we're gonna have access to the pump, which if we look over here, is located right in there. I forgot to show it to you when I had everything apart. So I'm just gonna show you now, um, but I do have the door stage two fuel pump fully installed. Check it out. Looks amazing. Um, what I really like about it is it's very plug and play where with the other fuel pump that I had on, I had to make a fuel line, which was kind of a pain. The fit and finish of this thing is just on another level. And I'm super excited to get a door fuel pump on this car. Now, one important note, I do need to update boot mode to say that I do have this high pressure fuel pump in here now, um, just to make sure that the car is going to run correctly. Otherwise, it's going to be running off of the old fuel pump's parameters. It's not gonna work out so well. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to put the intake manifold back on, put everything back in, and then we'll see if I flash the car or if we go right to the brakes. So either way, let's put this intake manifold on. All right, at this point, everything is back together from the fuel pump. That actually went, that went, went great. Um, there was no real assembly or anything like that of additional fuel lines to do. Everything just came in the kit and it was just very, very plug and play, very excellent kit. Um, by far the easiest one that I've installed to date. Um, so what I did actually off camera, I did a little liquid molly oil change just because it was time. Um, didn't film it because We've done like a thousand oil change, so you probably oil changed out. So I guess at this point, um, what I'm gonna do now while I'm still dirty, I don't really wanna get in the car. I have a, a new seat in there we're testing out, which maybe I'll show you a little bit later on, but let's get started with the brake upgrade, the M3 brake upgrade on my F30 335. All right, so now that the fueling is done, it is time to move to the brakes. Can't wait to get this started. Um, I am gonna show you my, my little secret here. So I'm still working on a bracket for it that is a little bit more user friendly than the one that I had to make. Um, but the reason I'm showing you this is because what you need to do, you can see I have like a thousand tiles here. 
you need to take like a two by four or something and you need to press it so that there is pressure on the brake before you take the calipers off. And this is going to prevent air in your brake system, which is a pain in the butt to get out. And what it's also going to do is it's going to make sure that it doesn't even really drip all that much once you actually take your whole caliper off. So what it does, it makes it a lot more convenient to change your brakes and a thousand times easier. So always make sure that you protect your seat, which in this case, look at that. It is so cool. It's like, I'm sure the Batmobile has this for car seat. Now, before we get started, I do want to say brake fluid is very corrosive. Wear gloves. Um, brake fluid will eat your paint and it will kill your dog. So be very careful with it. And with that, let's go. All right, and as you may have seen, I maybe had, you know, 10 drops or so of brake fluid come out of here. So very cool. Um, the other thing, I don't know if I told you or not, I keep forgetting. I pay no attention to my caliper being two different colors. Um, but anyway, um, one of the big upgrades that we're going to be doing as well is with the kit that we're installing, it includes a new stainless line, which is going to give you much better brake feel. So I am very excited about that. This car has been a little bit neglected since we got some of the other ones. So I'm really excited that we have some mods that are going on. We actually have a bunch more that we haven't talked about yet. So um, stay tuned because this car is far from being done. Now, when you're looking at the calipers that I'm removing from my car and also these F80 M3 ones, you might think at a quick glance, except for the ugly color on this one, that they are exactly the same. When in fact, they are actually different. If you look at the back here, you'll notice that first the gap from the center of this um, threaded portion here to another portion on the caliper, you'll notice that that is larger than this, which means it can accommodate a larger rotor. So the other way that you can tell that is if you look at the back, it'll say BMW. If you look right there, this one says 340. So that means that this can take up to a 300 and 40 millimeter brake rotor. However, if you take a look at the back of the M1, it actually has two numbers, if you can see it. It says it can either take a 370 or a 380. So you can see that you can take a much bigger rotor with this. Now you can't actually go to a full M3 rotor because it just isn't gonna fit. Um, but this is going to fit great. All right, so I accidentally hit record when I thought the camera wasn't recording and vice versa. So Basically, you probably missed me taking the old rotor off and then putting this new one on. But just to show you what you missed, this is the old and this is the new. I'll try to put it same level just so you can see the difference. Massive difference. Um, always clean up your hub before you actually install a rotor. I have that good to go. Next thing, you find it over here, is you always want to pre-assemble this portion of your brake line before installing it. And you always wanna use new mounting hardware. Um, cool thing is if your car has the front M sport brakes from the factory, you don't need to trim anything. You don't need to remove any dust shields. Everything just pretty much bolts up, which is amazing. Um, but anyway, like I was saying about this, you always wanna make sure that you pre-install it to the caliper before you put it on the car um, because this, it, the whole thing twists when you do it. And then when you go to put this in, there's this little nut and that just goes up and seals it. Um, so with that, let's install this. The other thing, to make sure that you have the right caliper, the bleeders will always be up. At this point, we have the front and rear 
brakes done on all four corners. I have the pads in, the sensors hooked up, everything is pretty much good to go. This guy's junk everywhere. Um, but yeah, everything is pretty much good. I do need to do a full brake flush, so I'm just going to do that off camera and then we'll continue. All right, at this point in the process, the flash is just finishing up. I had to update my custom carry Jordan map and I need to go back in and reset my oil light, which I won't film. And then I also need to reset the brake light for the front and rear. So other than that, I am pretty much done. Can't wait to take it for a drive. All right, so here we are out in the car. We did the bed in process off camera. Basically what we did for that is we started around 60 to 70 miles an hour and then you slam on the brakes and go down to 10 and then you repeat that about 10 to 12 times you want to make sure you get those brakes nice and hot and then you drive around and let them naturally cool now what that's going to do is it's going to evenly disperse a layer of brake pad essentially of that the composite that makes up your brake pad onto the rotor and then what's going to happen it's like when when you go drag racing a lot of guys will do a burnout they'll get the tires nice and hot they'll lay down some rubber and then your rubber on your tires is sticking to the melted rubber that's on the road you're gonna get the best launch same thing here if you have that layer of brake pad on your rotor it's going to just adhere together when it's hot and it's going to make your car stop significantly better also if you don't do the bed in process you're going to most likely experience uneven pad distribution so instead of that material being nice and even what can happen is if it gets unevenly distributed on your rotor you can get a vibration um, that basically feels like your rotors are warped and a lot of times it's not actually the case um, a lot of times it's just you just have a, a funky deposit of pad material and it's going to cause uneven wear you're not going to get optimal braking you also get a vibration and more and it just it's not worth it just go out and embed your brakes in um, so as far as what does it feel like so what I'm going to do is once we get around this bend on this back farm road I'm going to hit the brakes and show you now it's gonna be really hard for you to actually see because you're not in the car with us um, Again, it's gonna be really hard for you to tell, and I don't wanna get Zach too sick. So uh, we're just gonna stop with that. But basically, if you've driven an F80 M3, it feels like that, but I'll say if you've driven a stock F80, it's a step better because this has stainless lines on it. Now with the specific setup that we did on my car and also Chris's car, if you saw that video, it's a very aggressive pad, um, works best once it's heated up a little bit. Um, so it's great for if you're tracking the car and that kind of thing, but it's not a full track pad where it's, you know, like nails on a chalkboard, metal on metal, um, when you actually go to stop. Tommy El Garage has some videos of him in track pads and it, it's just this awful screeching. They are not there, but they are definitely louder. Let's see if you can hear it. You probably can't hear it. Um, now, for a daily driver, it might be a little bit much, especially if you're not going to be seeing the racetrack. I don't really drive this car all that much, so for me, it's not really an issue, but Chris and I have already talked about swapping his pads out immediately to something like an EBC Red Stuff, which is a ceramic pad. It's going to be much quieter. There's going to be a lot less brake dust. And for most of you, it's probably gonna be a better option. Um, again, if, if this was my daily driver, I would probably put those pads on as well. Um, but because I don't really drive this car all that much, um, because we have a couple other cars, I, I'm not really too concerned about it. I'm just gonna actually take his pads and use a second set for this car. Um, but overall, one of the best things I have done to this car, um, if you haven't, brakes are one of those things where if you haven't physically experienced really good braking, you don't know what you're missing out on. Um, one of the cars that really stands out to me is I drove an Audi R8 V10 Plus and the carbon ceramics on that car, unbelievable. I've never driven a car that stops as well as that Audi R8. Yeah, I didn't think that that was possible. I thought the tires would just like slide and smear across the road. Um, so complete game changer. Uh, this is a complete game changer. It's not as extreme as the Audi R8 
um, but this is about twenty thousand dollars less. So, you know, kind of you get what you pay for. So all in all, great upgrade. Super glad that I did it. Um, I wish I did it four years ago. Um, especially as if you guys are tuning your cars and whatnot, you're adding extra horsepower, which you will learn about what we're up to with this car very soon. You definitely need to be able to stop and you need to be able to stop efficiently. And brakes are one of the, the best things that you can invest in. And you don't even have to go crazy. This is a relatively inexpensive big brake upgrade. Like I said before, it's like $2,000 ish, just factoring in the used calipers. Um, and hands down will transform your car and it's gonna make it safer and just overall better. Um, so if you haven't looked into this upgrade, I would certainly do so. If you're interested in any of the parts or tools we use in today's video, be sure to see the links in the description. My name is Brian, that's Zach. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe. Check us out at keysmotorsports.com. We'll see you in the next video.